Hi, welcome to Mission Control Houston. I'm Kelly Humphreys, and with me today is Sandy Fletcher. She's the lead spacewalk systems expert for Expedition 34, and that's the International Space Station crew that's on orbit right now. And we're really happy to be joining the students at Northtown Elementary in Columbus, Ohio. Hi, guys. What is it like to live in space? Well, I'm actually a flight controller and trainer, so I get to talk to the astronauts. And what they tell me is uh, it's a lot of fun because they get to float around the space station and pretend to fly like Superman. And they also get to play with their food, which uh, is not <laughs> encouraged when you're on the ground, but it's okay when you're an astronaut on board the International Space Station. Uh, but they do a lot of experiments, and uh, they also have to do exercise two hours a day to make sure that their bones and their muscle mass is is still strong when they come back to the Earth. What do, what is it, our astronauts? What is to live in space? Um, are astronauts still going into space? Is her question? Oh yes, they certainly are. Um, some people believe that because uh, the space shuttle system was uh, retired last year that we aren't flying astronauts anymore. Uh, but we actually have two NASA astronauts on board right now. Uh, that's Kevin Ford and Tom Marshburn and uh, Canadian astronaut Chris Hadfield, who will be the commander of the International Space Station uh, in, a, in, I think, two months or so. And there are three Russian crew members on board. And we've had people on board space station for about 11 years now, continuously on orbit, which is quite an achievement. How can I join the space program? How can I join the space program? It's on mute. <laughs> so. Well, uh, there's quite a number of different ways, actually. Uh, the civil servant jobs and astronaut jobs are actually posted online um, through the various websites. I work for a small uh, company, actually. I don't work for NASA directly. And they post their jobs online as well. So there are a lot of different avenues into space. What does it take to be a mission control specialist? Well, I'm fairly unique in that I actually have a physics background. Uh, most of the colleagues that are, are flight controllers and trainers along with me have various engineering backgrounds, whether that's uh, aeronautical engineering uh, or mechanical engineering. But NASA also employs people who are of different backgrounds as well. There's actually a legal department, so we have lawyers. We have flight surgeons who make sure the astronauts stay healthy and so those are medical doctors. We have people who are professional scuba divers. They work out at our neutral buoyancy lab for when our crew members practice their spacewalks. We have scuba divers in the pool with them to make sure they're safe. And you also have people who, like Kelly Humphreys here, who's actually a journalist. So you might not think that uh, you know journalists would necessarily be employed by the space program, but there are very many different opportunities here. What should I focus on in school in order to work at NASA? That's a really good question, and I think whatever you focus on, the best thing to do is to make sure that you really, really love it. Uh, if you love it, then you're going to work hard at it, and you'll do well. So uh, while I happen to choose physics, and I'll be honest, my interest in physics was peaked when I noticed that uh, the astronauts that NASA was hiring, there were a bunch of physicists in there. They also hire uh, military pilots. So I would say find something that you really love doing and then focus on doing that very well. But also, uh, you know, take good care of yourself physically and uh, be interested in other people. Uh, one of the surprising aspects of this job is working with other people. And if you can't work with other people very well, uh, you're going to have a hard time in life. So I've been very fortunate that uh, I've had very good coworkers, and uh, we actually have a lot of fun. 
Well, you know, and, and even not just studies, but, but teamwork is something you can learn doing a lot of extracurricular activities and doing sports and things like that. And uh, this whole center here works on teamwork, uh, as does the international partnership that makes the space station work. So it really helps to get that kind of, uh, of a background. Uh, but the majority of folks here are in the science, technology, engineering, and math fields uh, from what they study. But uh, as Sandy says, uh, do something that you really love doing, and that means that you're going to ensure you do it well, and that's going to put you in the best position to uh, get a job at NASA or, for that matter, anywhere else you might decide to go in your life. Why did you choose to work at NASA? Well, I grew up in rural New England, um, which we didn't have a lot of exposure to the space program at that point. Uh, this was actually, uh, Skylab was really the, the first thing I really remember. On. And, um, but what really got me interested in space was actually a movie called Star Wars. Uh, I was about nine years old and I went to see Star Wars. And I'll be honest, I went to see it because my older sister wanted to go see it. Uh, but I just fell in love with the whole concept of living and working in space. And, uh, you know, I'm one of those very lucky kids who wanted to be involved with the space program and uh, ended up actually being involved with the space program. So it can happen. And I ended up uh, getting to stay home from kindergarten to watch Alan Shepard launch. My mom was a big space fan way back. I'm a little older than Sandy uh, when we first started flying humans in space. And Alan Shepard was the first American to get launched into space. And uh, I got to stay home from kindergarten to watch that, and I've been a space fan ever since then. What fun and interesting parts are there to being a NASA specialist? I'll be honest, uh, it is really cool to uh, be involved with the space program. Uh, people know what you're what you talk about uh, when you say you work at NASA or you work on the space program most people have a general idea what that means and they're very enthusiastic about it uh, Kelly had mentioned earlier that it's a lot of teamwork and I really enjoy working not only with the astronauts and training them but I also work really well with the colleagues uh, we all have the same goal you know we're from all over the United States and actually from different countries but we all share the same goal that the space program is really important. Exploring other worlds is something that's exciting to us. And uh, it's an amazing experience to be part of a large team that all believes the same thing. Well, and we got to admit, it's pretty cool working in mission control uh, where everything uh, comes together. Uh, and it's also really neat to be able to go out and see launches and things like that uh, and uh, to get out uh, with our colleagues at the laboratories that help develop these systems and technology that we do. You know, we were talking earlier about how uh, st astronauts get to the space station, and, and right now we're all the Americans, uh, and everybody for that matter, is flying up on Russian Soyuz spacecraft. And it's kind of interesting because we used to be in a Cold War with uh, what was then the Soviet Union, and now it's the Russian Federal Space Agency that we work, we work with. And so that's how we get folks up and down to space right now. But NASA also is working on new spacecraft. We're working on the Orion spacecraft, uh, which is designed to take us farther than we've ever gone in space, way past the moon, out to asteroids and Mars and elsewhere. And uh, people in Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, are developing a new space launch system rocket that'll carry tons and tons of cargo into space uh, at once uh, and working together here with Johnson Space Center with the folks developing the Orion capsule. So there's all kinds of things coming up uh, in addition to what we're doing now on the International Space Station, but this space station is kind of like the, the, uh, the learning place where we are learning what it takes to live for a long time uh, in the microgravity environment. It has all kinds of effects on our bodies and on how physics work, on how different mechanisms work, and so it's really important for us to learn what we're doing now, but the real goal is to go even farther out there so that uh, we can help spread humanity throughout the solar system. And that's actually where you guys come in because, uh, you know, we're working on the space program right now. Uh, we were handed off this space program by people who worked for uh, Mercury through Gemini, Apollo, and all these other programs that 
that build the foundations of what we do, not only in mission control, but all of space exploration. And so I feel like our generation right now is caretaking it for your generation. And uh, it's very important for you guys to be excited about space exploration too, because someday you're gonna be sitting up here and trying to encourage the next generation. This is a very long-term project. It's not gonna be done by the time uh, I retire. You're still gonna have plenty of opportunities. And we know that Ohio has a really rich space history with people like John Glenn, who uh, made historic contributions to our space exploration effort. And we're looking for you guys to be uh, the next John Glenn or, or the next Gene Kranz sitting here in Mission Control guiding the mission. Thank you. That was our questions. Well, thank you guys for being with us today. We hope you learn a lot about space exploration in your studies and that you go on to do great things, whatever you choose to do. Take care, guys, and thanks for your great questions.